Our last two games have seen Bournemouth play the teams in 20th and 19th. Tomorrow against Luton, it's against the 18th. So far, we've had four points out of six. Can we make it seven out of nine? The Hatters, though, they'll be wanting a win. It's Bournemouth versus Luton, and this is the big back of the net match preview. Hello, my name's Sam. My name's Tom. And it's a game that, of course, has got to be played again after what happened last time at Dean Court. some kind of incident on the pitch where the player's gone down a lot of ball players ran straight over to him stretch is coming out and uh, yeah it's a little bit concerning a little bit concerning yeah Tom Lockyer set for defender the players have gone into the changing room and there's still a player out there down on the ground within a medical emergency so uh, hopefully they can sort him out. Chubby, 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 look here. Oh, chubby, chubby. Yeah, so that was back in December, abandoned after their captain Tom Lockyer collapsed on the pitch and that was the 59th minute that it happened. And as the clock hits 59 in this game tomorrow or today, if you're watching on match day, Luton Town fans and Bournemouth fans, we're getting together to applaud all of the people that came together to help effectively save his life. Of course, the match was abandoned. It was won all at the time, but mm. the football was largely irrelevant. And I've got to say, Tom, I've yeah. been to many football games, but that was probably one of the strangest and eeriest yeah, games in a while I've ever been to. Yeah, it's a weird one that in a, a game where you're just you know, obviously focusing on football and trying to win a football match, and then suddenly a moment can make you just completely forget about football. It's irrelevant and... Yeah, it was really a worrying moment, wasn't it? And um, obviously, in the end, it, um, everything went okay in that in that sense that he was he was okay, and it was it felt quite quickly that we that we heard that he was stable, which was which was mm. the main thing. But um, yeah, obviously, the game had to had to be replayed, and and now it's come around to that time. It would be probably be a, a strange atmosphere, but as you say, mate, 59th minute, all come together and and clap him and and all that good stuff. So yeah, listen, it's just, the main thing is he's okay. Now I've seen he's been in and around the place, yeah. Sandy, which is really really good to see. So the game is now going to be replayed, and I think it'll be a good one. I think it'll be a good match. It's it's interesting because we've been a club that's been, I suppose, closely linked. We've played each other so many times yeah. through the divisions, but you both had minus points. They had it thirteen points worse than we did. Mm. Financial turmoil. 
small stadiums, disproving the media narrative. We have had it all. Yeah. And this was another thing that has weirdly brought our two clubs together. We didn't want it to happen, but yeah. of course, we're so glad that he's OK. Now, if you're going to the game tomorrow, you might be interested in an initiative that's been put together by the Cherries Trust and also Talking Cherries. They launched a joint fundraising campaign to fund the supporters coaches for the fans of Luton Town. And they smashed their original target, which I think was just over £2,000. The club also contributed to this as well. So I think they're nearly there mm. to fund a fourth. And look, if you want to donate, the Just Giving link is at the bottom. Any money is extra will be given to the British Heart Foundation. And also the club and uh, Talking Cherries and their team with Cherries Trust will have three different places around the stadium where you can go to if you if you just want a chat about it. They can be found in Bar One, which is home supporters only from that's from 5pm. Also the DC Lounge, which is on the other side in the East Stand, home and away supporters. That's from 5 and there'll be a gazebo station near the away end as well from 5.30pm. They'll be on hand to support anyone that may be feeling a little bit anxious about the game or maybe just want a chat, including some mental health first aiders as well. Plus, as we said, 59 minutes, mate. Yeah. And I think it's going to be... Um, and it's, it's funny, it's... Um, I don't want to sound sort of disrespectful, but sometimes we have these like planned applauses, mm. but you do sort of sometimes get lost in the moment yeah, sure. of the football match itself. But I don't think this will happen this no. time round because it was such a huge yeah. issue. And uh, I know that the stadium's going to be absolutely yeah, um, behind them. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure, mate. And that's huge. Yeah, and, and, and the fact of the matter is we know that this game is happening at this point because of what happened. So mm. it's going to be in everyone's mind. So, yeah, that'll be, be nice for, for both sets of supporters to um, show their, their, their support for, for Tom. And as we've reiterated, it's um, the main thing is he's OK. This is, um, this is a preview. So we are going to get all tribal in a minute, Luton fans. But we've had a bit of a love-in, we've got to say. And I suppose the love-in, we're going to carry on for a, for a little bit. Rob Edwards, mate. Oh, my God. Ro Am, I was... uh, Am I straight? Am I straight? Every really? time I see the guy, I, I question my my sexuality. That's for sure. What a guy! What and you know what? Mm. I suppose the um, the gloating that Luton fans have been doing all season. Yeah, obviously it's difficult when they're in the relegation zone, but they're in a league above Watford, mm. and it's probably exacerbated by the fact that Watford have sacked yet another manager. That's not like Watford. It's so unlike Watford. And Rob Edwards, of course, was Luton manager for a bit, and they they decided to obviously dispose of him pretty quickly. And for us, there's mm. a weird link with one of the names that's been linked with the. Uh, Absolutely, the uh, position yeah. at Vicarage Road. Scott Parker. Wow. Well, I mean, that would be incredible, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, he's linked. I, I guess he's always going to be kind of linked with championship clubs, I think. Uh, makes sense. Um, so yeah, there's a few names in there, but he is one of them. That would be would be funny. I mean, I, I'm not sure if we've got any Watford fans as subscribers. I'll be very surprised if any Watford fans are watching a Luton preview. But you never know. They might be, but as a football, they stink, don't they? <laughs> Oh, they just sat managers. I mean, they are just horrible. And it is great to see them struggling. Um, <laughs> it really is. I it, no, it is. It just is. I just don't like them. But um, yeah, it is, is a weird one. I mean, the Edwards one, it was bizarre that he got he got the boot at Watford. Um, Two off, months later, he was at Kettleworth Road. And then what he did there was obviously incredible. And, and yeah, they should have given him more time. And then since then, they've obviously tried with some managers. And Ismail, I don't think, is a bad manager. I think he's got decent pedigree. But... Something all right there, and they're probably now just you know when you kind of go down for the Premier League, you've got them a few years where you've still got a bulk of good squad mm. there that's fighting. For, they're just drifting now to you kind of going. They might struggle to come back for a while. Yeah, um, you know you never know, but at the moment they don't look right, do they, Watford? And I'm sure all the Luton fans watching are. It's hard for them to see that Watford struggling so much. It really is a managerial merry-go-round, isn't it? Because all these so Nathan Jones yeah. left Luton to go to Saints, who we're not best friends with. It's got to be said he as well. well it? But yeah, Rob Edwards' first full season in charge, taking them up to the Premier League via the playoffs. I remember watching that game. Uh, they were playing Coventry. That's right. At the time, um, I think Chris Billum Smith was fighting at Dean Court oh, yeah. that night, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they did it on pens. And it's one of those things that we were mm. we were so glad to see. And look, um, I think most Bournemouth fans, uh, you know, we've got second clubs. Some of them are Newcastle because of Eddie. I think Luton's up there. Burton Albion because of our previous yeah. with them and yeah, you, you, with them. But Luton's up there. Yeah, obviously we've 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 spoken about the 
you know, kind of what's all around this football match in regards to Tom Lockyer. But even but even prior to that, I think the deductions that you mentioned are always key. I always have a little bit of an eye on Rotherham as well. It's, it's a shame to see them struggling because people that don't remember um, us, Luton and Rotherham all had deductions that season. Luton were the, were the worst, weren't they? Minus 30. 30, I mean. Um, but us and Rotherham were there with, with minus 17. And so I always keep a bit of an eye out. And I think the fact they had minus 30 in League 2 and now in the Premier League is, is remarkable, really. And... And it helps that I like going there. Yeah. So it's uh, not too far. There's a nice free beer. The concourse. Did you see that vlog? Oh, what a Click vlog! The link in the card. What a Go vlog! Um, yeah. So and the fact that their um, their current manager is gorgeous. Does that gorgeous? You sound like the of Little Britain. Yeah. Um, yeah. I suppose, and it's yeah minus minus thirty points. I mean, that was that was an absolute joke, wasn't it? I mean, that, and you could argue, and I, I've probably got to say this, and Bournemouth fans mm. m- might not like me saying it. It is a bigger fairy tale than even us, because you know what? Like we, mm. we broke FFP. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying, and you can make a case. And for we that. got fined for it. I think it's more the reason of the fairy tale is more if historically Luton have uh, I've a been bigger, up there before. Yeah, and a bigger football club than Bournemouth. Yeah, so I think that's, Don't that's say what that plays into it. Are they, oh, We're going to get tribal now. Over okay, right. Have we done it. Are we are we done now? I quite like Jack Stacey as well. He was yeah, Jack, for both yeah, clubs. Um, who's the other one? I was thinking. I just thought of one that played for both clubs. Steve Robinson. Oh yeah. And uh, Harry Corlett come for yeah, our ranks, didn't he? Well, so, um, quite a few. Yeah, got some nice little links there. But anyway, <laughs> we're miles above them. Okay, here's the league table. Let's take Let's a look. Let's go try them. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, Luton Town. the gap. <laughs> Luton Town. F4 was not impeccable, but they've, they've given themselves a chance. I mean, look, there is the possibility they win tomorrow mm. and they go above Forest. Yes. And look, we know that there are points implications still to come, yeah, potentially for yeah. Everton, and Forest. potentially for Forest as well. And just to add a bit more spice to proceedings, Forest are at Luton next Saturday Ooh, as well. So absolutely huge. So yeah, it, it's it's yeah, going to yeah. be a, a big match for them. I think it's a big match for us really as well, because... Luton fans, if you're not aware, we played Sheffield United at the um, weekend, drew two all with them in a in a performance that was um, very underwhelming mm. and then quite overwhelming, I suppose, for the last 15. But to draw against a team that, yeah. no disrespect to the Blades, but I'm going to be disrespectful, that bad. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we will be reacting. But you've got to say that Luton Town this season, they, they've been all right, haven't they? Yeah, they're probably saying the same thing, that that's a really frustrating one because... You know, they lost Sheff- 3-1, I think. Yeah, because Sheffield are going down for a reason. But... I was chatting this with with friends of the week actually just talking about this Luton game what's weird with Luton I don't know if they agree I watch them mm. and every time I think Luton are good I tell you what Luton are good and then they lose mm. and it happened the Villa one stood out to me because it was it was on the telly they were 2-0 down come back to 2-all and I think do you want to say naively I respected it because they were in the ascendancy they went we can win this yeah and then they lost. Yeah. And they were brilliant and they lost again. And you look at the... Because f- to me, they've been good lately. The yeah. form table yeah. goes completely the other way. It's the reverse of when I remember going to Old Trafford and going, man, you're rubbish. But their form was right at the top. Yeah. And Luton are, are below Sheffield United on form. Yeah. I mean, they haven't won in ages. Yeah. But performance-wise, I always think they're in... They're always competitive. They're always in the game. They always cause problems. I think a few injuries haven't helped them in key areas, which we'll, we'll come on to in the, in the predicted teams. I think, you know, we, we know it from more more in the past under Eddie when when you're a newly promoted side, a few injuries can really hurt you. And I do think that's affected yeah. them. Um, we know just from the, the 59 minutes or so that we, we played in the reverse fix that Adebayo caused a lot of problems and he's out. Um, they got the lad from Arsenal, uh, Lacongo, who's a good yeah. player, he's out. So they, that's, that's hurt them a little bit. But I... Right, even if you said to me there's going to be zero more deductions, mm. I think there probably will be. But let's say there isn't. Mm. I still think they'll have enough. Luton. Yeah, I think they'll have enough. I think they're. I think they're in games more at the expense of who then? Uh, Nottingham Forest. Really? Yeah, I don't think Nottingham Forest is as good as Luton. Uh, it's massive game, obviously. Like you said, I didn't realise it was that soon, but I don't think they're as good as Luton. Um, as effective as Luton, I would say. I think. Yeah, I think there's something about them. There's... Well, you've seen that with their last game at, at Crystal Palace. They've sort of got a never say die attitude, yes. and yes. they always okay. Apart from like your Man Cities and your Liverpools and stuff, they're always in games. What I would say is they drew with Liverpool and they lost in the last kick against Arsenal in one game as well. So they're even in them a lot of the time. Yeah. I don't know. There's 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 still that spirit around them. I it might end up with them not quite having enough quality. It might, but. Saturday now, I think I think they're going to have enough. I really do think they'll have enough. 
Um, it might all change. I might see him uh, tomorrow and go, oh, they weren't as good as I thought they'd be. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. But at this current moment, I just think they're going to have a slightly too much. I really, really do. Um, I just Because normally with teams that play in the kind of way they do, and you know, like you said, they're, they're right to the end and they're fighting and they're scrapping... You think, have they got enough quality going forward? I look at them sometimes and think, we all know there's mm. been enough talk about Ross Barkley. Adebayo's great for him. Even when he's out, I think, oh, Colt Morris is a good player. Yeah. And then Benny, and, and I think, oh, they've got, they got a bit in there, you know. I quite like Doherty on the left-hand side. Okay, so put the game in December aside. Can mm. you remember the last time we played Luton at Dean Court? It had been in the Championship, obviously. We didn't lose to them both times, did we? I remember the one at Kenny. Well, yeah, we all remember that. It was in the uh, Championship 21-22 yep. season. Uh, first half goals from Philip Billing and Dominic Solanke. Right. Uh, both assists, by the way, from Ryan Christie. Of course. Um, but then Luton did pull one back. That was mm. uh, Lloyd Kelly scoring his own. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah they do remember it now. Like I say, annoyingly. That... And that took Cherry to the top of the table, by the way. Oh, OK. Annoyingly from that season, I remember the defeat more because yeah. it was last minute. Uh, Naismith for them. Yeah. And the last minute when we come back from two two goals again. Morgan Rogers' only bloody goal for us, wasn't it? Morgan Rogers. Yeah, and I think Mark Hondes, actually. Morgan Rogers. Yeah, but um, yeah, that was an exciting one. But yeah, we um, obviously done well that season. We had a good team. But yeah, I, I can't remember... That game too well, but we've always had we've always had good games with them over the years, haven't we? I don't know what head to heads like. Well, it's uh, one fifteen drawn seven, lost seven at Steen Court in all mm-hmm. competitions. Pretty even. We've won twenty five, mm. drawn seventeen, lost twenty two. I'll always remember. Oh, I was about um, to say a game. I, was, I always remember. Go on. Go on. I'll ask to, uh, October twenty two thousand and three. Right. and it was um, a six three. At Dean Court. Oh, you told me about this. I can't yeah, remember it. Six three. It was a crazy game. It was a really. But which game can you remember? I can't remember what the. Re- I went to Luton mm. and it got called off. Ah, yeah. You know what? And mm. that is in two thousand and eight, wasn't it? That's right. After eight minutes, apparently. Yeah. Um, and there's a there's a nice little picture if you type it in. You yeah. can see a few little little bits of the snow coming down. There I think Sammy Eye goes there. there at you the can top. see it. But, Love uh, that. Yeah, do vaguely remember that one. So that was a that was a weird one. But yeah, we've it, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that there's been a, a real a close closely fought affairs over the years because it's, we've been relatively parallel to them. And it's, yeah. I've always felt like they've been tight games. So that doesn't surprise me. Now, as ever, this match preview is powered by SofaScore, our favourite footballing app. If you download it, you get real-time goal notifications that are faster than if you watch them on TV. Player and team information, stats, heat maps, and it's the oh. highest rated live score app on the App Store and Google Play Store. I managed to say it without slipping well up. Are you done. pleased with that? Yeah, I love it, mate. I was just looking, I was actually looking um, when I was thinking about team news and stuff for this game, I was looking how you know, Luton's performance against, against Palace I've only seen like bits yeah. on um, Match of the Day and stuff and just looking at how the players performed and it wouldn't surprise me to tell you that Ross Barkley got uh, the best rating. Yeah. Um, in there he is. He's been great. Yeah, way. he's just been on it at the moment. I mean, considering he's played a full game there, right, he's had, f- he's made 46 passes. 43 of them are accurate. Yeah. 93%. But, but, yeah, but also, Ooh. I mean, a lot of those, pa- I mean, I wonder how many of those passes are like under five yards. It doesn't matter, mate. You keep the ball. You keep the yeah, ball, Andrew Sermon. But he's, he's quality. And some, if you put together a montage of, of some of his best moments, I mean, I know Classic that Sofa Score can't quite do that, yeah, but yeah. these little pirouettes he's done, I saw him on a, on a live show where he did a lovely pirouette and then shot. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's, but anyway, if you download Sofa Score, it really helps us out as a yeah. channel. There's a QR code on screen. There's a link in the description. And for good measure, we've added a card at the top. Just tap it, download the app, and come back to the preview when you've done it. I'll give you three seconds to do it. Come on, three, two, one. You said three to one as I was doing one, two, three, which is brilliant. And I also realised, by the way, that not only does it say their names, it shows a little image of them. So I'm just zooming in there, look. Rob Edwards. Oh, you see, he is dreamy. By the way, we've got loads of content that's covering this game. We've got, uh, what is it, a full time fan camps? Fag cabs at full time, yeah, instant reaction, and obviously more than welcome to come over any Luton fans as well. Got the vlog yeah. the day after, of course, um, and then later in the week we'll probably dissect it a little bit more in a second look show. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we're going to have two weeks to fill. So look, the away day shows are going to be coming We just talk about two weeks because we've got yeah, no other games. That's what we'll do. We'll just do an extended second look that lasts what, yeah. 14 days. That's fine. But yeah, we've got, we've got some away day shows to, that we've kept in the in we've just kept it there because we knew we had this little break coming up um so yeah 
make sure you subscribe and like for all that because there'll be plenty of content on the game itself. Just looking through some of their uh, results since the turn of the year, Luton. Yeah. I mean, I, did, I think they got knocked out of, uh, of the FA Cup, but they had a couple of, I mean, obviously Bolton took them to a replay, yeah. but Luton overcame them. Um, some of these results, I mean, one all at Burnley, I suppose if you're both scrapping out that, you know, you'd take a point at yeah. relegation rivals. That, that, but then they won at Everton, which I was huge for wasn't it? Yeah, but I bet they were gutted it was cut. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Course, they they were probably thinking, ah, oh, but, but still momentum, yeah. momentum, and look what they did against Brighton. That was a mad game, mad game, um, hell of a result. And then you obviously saw that Newcastle one, which was crazy game, four yeah. four. But what you're seeing from Luton then is you're going, I'll tell you what, you know, Newcastle are always a tough game. But you're going eight goals in two games. You know, you almost think, have they got enough quality up the top end of the pitch? That's yeah. proven it. And then and then it's typical football. You go, well, now they got Sheffield United at home. They'll win that and then lose that. And that was a real hard one for them to take. Man United game. I mean, they, they ran them close, didn't they? Yeah, but I remember Man, Man U were too luck quickly. I think yeah. I think Hoyland scored after yeah, a minute or something. Yeah. Ridiculous. But then Lewis absolutely battered them. Yeah, they just they couldn't score. Um, Liverpool and City is what it is. We know how that can be. That was in the Cup, wasn't it, City? Yeah. Yes, of course it was. Actually, they got in the FA Cup, yeah. And they got they got a bit of a drubbing in that. And the Villa game we spoke about was frustrating. And the Palace game, as I say, I was looking at it because obviously we, we had our own game yeah. and they're 1-0 down and you kind of briefly mentioned it there. While it was 1-0, I thought, it wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Luton will be there till the end. That's and so it was one of their subs, actually, Woodrow, wasn't it? And that, that must be key for them. We had it in our game. We were 2-0 down, as we said come back the impact off the bench helped us yeah. that would be big for them with the injuries they've got a, a striker Woodrow who's not really known too much at this level comes off the bench gets a goal for is them. that what makes makes you think they've got enough yeah I think I think they've got enough and I think like you say with injuries so, and still bringing players off the bench that can make an impact is key for them and they've even though they've got a lot of unknown players people like your Barclays they've been there a little bit and I just think they'll they'll love that responsibility even like Andros Townsend coming off the bench a lot of experience one of the things they've got in, in their locker I mean the, uh, this particular player is not featuring today but you see the most headed goals in the Premier League this season Elijah Adebayo look at that with, with four but they've got a lot of aerial prowess we saw yeah. that of course in the first game but he will not be available we'll go through who is available and who is not for Bournemouth um, we've got a number of players that are on the injury table. Ryan Fredericks what? is uh, somewhere. Do you know Ryan Fredericks? Yeah, I don't know if you celebrate it, but um, a year, a year ago this week it was. That I his, should have baked you a cake. A year ago this year he made his last, but he came on as a sub against Liverpool in the 82nd minute and he's never been the same since apparently. Uh, but I think Fredericks might miss out on this game. You know, we were playing that initials game on the way to insert stadium here. I can't remember, but it was the away yeah. game. We were going through like MB. Matthew Marvin, Baudry. Yeah, Marvin Bartley. Sorry, Mohamed Bertha. But I wouldn't have said Marcos Sinesi Baron. I forgot about that. He's got that double barrel thing, wouldn't it? That's one to keep in the locker. One, I'll do that to Steve because he, he doesn't want and to. And RF, you're only allowed to say Ryan Fred, so I'm not letting you say the other one, so that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Lloyd Kelly, of course. Yeah, uh, James Hill, Max Aarons as well. All out. No new uh, news on any injuries after Saturday's game. Hopefully everyone came through yeah. relatively unscathed. Um, as for Luton Town, of course. Of course, we know about Tom Lockyer. Yeah. Um, Nakamba as well. Yeah. Uh, Dan Potts. Isn't he on AFTV? I knew you were going to say uh, that. Also, look, Bell uh, Johnson as well. Mads Anderson. Oh, Adebayo. God. A huge miss for him. And there are some other ones like Mengi. I think I think he'll probably be back. Yeah, and I mean, they, they'll hope he will. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he should be a cat. I think it's just because it says a knock there. Brown's obviously out. Lokongo as well. Osso's another one that's a bit of a doubt. Um, it'll be, I wonder if they just try and get him through this one. You never know, do you? Especially when it's a quick turnaround. But I think that's why I think they've been doing well. I've mentioned there Lokongo go who I think is a very good player who's out and his kind of like for like replacement would probably be Nakamba so to have them both out a lot of responsibility levels out on Ross Barkley and he's certainly turned up for him hasn't he you know what um, Bournemouth and Luton have been very much I mean of course we are because we are smaller clubs we've been very much the guinea pigs this season in what sense new referees oh, fast God track referees another one. do you know who the referee is oh, Sam Ellison he's taking his second Premier League game when he's in charge uh, tomorrow night. His first game was the Boxing Day fixture between Sheffield United and Luton. He's never been a, f a ref for any fixture in involving Cherries fans before. Why, well. why are we always the guinea pigs? Why, why is it not <laughs> Man City v Liverpool? To be fair, instance? you could have given me a ref that's refed a thousand games and I would have said he's probably crap. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, who did we have? We had Anthony Taylor, didn't we, against Sheffield? Yeah. Probably, probably one of the most well-known referees. Yeah, yeah. Crap. Yeah. 
Not good. Not good. Uh, take a brief look at the stats from uh, Matt mm. from Vitals. We'll take a look at the um, their average positions of the starting lineups. Yeah. Um, apart from Aston Villa, it actually appears that Luton try to push yeah. relatively high. Where, yeah. where do you expect most of the action to be on this pitch? Is it a battle of of the midfielders? Is it going to be Lewis Cook giving yeah. his um, his fellow? Did did he and Barkley, Barkley have a play England. together? Maybe potentially, maybe named in the same that. squad at some yeah, point. It might but, be. but yeah, I think I think what's interesting about Lewis midfield battle, couldn't it? Is we all know how, how good Barkley is on the ball, and they can play for him if they need to. But when I've seen him a lot, they like to get it winding up balls in the box as well. Mm. So they've got a few um, weapons there, so it'll be interesting. I think we're gonna have to try and stop the deliveries at source really, because I think they've they've got some big threats in the box. So big game for for kind of us. In wide areas, I wonder if we go for a bit of pace in there to, to make sure we stop them getting to the byline, getting balls in a box, all that good stuff. OK, right. As for the teams, mm. there was someone on our YouTube comments saying we spend too long talking people through our team. Harsh, but OK, we'll do it in one minute. Oh, all okay. right. How's about that? Bournemouth team in a minute then. All right, who have we got? I think it's going to be Neto. <laughs> OK, well, uh, not Travers. No, I do think that will still start. Um, so, yeah, Neto and goal. Back four from right to left. Adam Smith staying in. Ilya Zabani is there. Type this out, by the way. Slow down, slow down. Well, you just told me to speed up. All right, go on then. Smith. Yeah. Zabani. Yeah. Christopher Mepp. Is yeah, it Christopher yeah. or Christopher? Yeah. Mepp. Dongo Watara. He's got to play. After his last performance, he's in at left back. Okay. Lewis Cook and Ryan Christie continue in, in the middle. Yeah. Semenyo, I think, will stay on the right. Sinistera will come in on the left. So okay. Him, yeah. and, him and Watara are brilliant when they come on. Mm. So I think them two. I'm going to make a little curve for you. So Gamble. Dom Solanke in the 10. Wow, okay. Um, and Enos Unal. Oh, I'm excited to see I think he might trial it. So it's almost 4-4-2, but I think Dom will set off Unal a little bit. Uh, that's what I'm going to go for. Wow, wow. Can't wait to see that. Okay, and well, as... not the actual team, that's my prediction, so... Yeah, okay, well, could be, fair enough. I'll could be excited that. to see something that you're never going to see. Yeah, and yeah. as for Luton Town? Yeah, as I as Colin Metz, obviously Kaminsky will be in goal. Underrated keeper, by the way. Um, I think he'll be in goal. They'll go with a three. They kind of go three, four, two, one most of the time. I'm gonna put two in there that are doubts, but I think they'll get through it. It sounds like they should be okay. Yeah. Uh, Burke will be in there, and then I'm gonna go Mengi and Osho. Kabore to continue kind of right wing back if you like. Um, Ross Barkley. And I'm gonna put Chong in the middle. He's played higher up as well, but I think he'll win there for his legs. And then Doherty on the left. Chong's uh, been good, by the way. Yeah, Chong's a good player. I think, yeah. Um, and then Og Benny. And I'm going to put Townsend in for his experience. Didn't start the weekend. And Carlton Morris to lead the line in without a bio out. Woodrow could stake the claim by coming off the bench and scoring, but I think he'll try and do that again. So, yeah, I've made... I think it's just one change in there from the weekend, which is Townsend coming in. Uh, I think I've taken Clark out. So, yeah, let us know, Luton fans, what you think. But that's what I'm going to go with. Right. Um, do you remember last week we asked people to put their predictions in? Mm. And we said, do you watch till the end? Put the word moose. Now, I think... Mm. Right, this is my... It's because everyone did it. So we were like... Do people re- But then I thought, if you're looking at it and you're thinking all these people are saying moose, are you just then doing the same thing? Maybe. Or are you scrolling to the particular part of the video where mm. we ask for predictions? Not even thinking. They're that. hearing what they yeah. say. So what do you think we can do? That's maybe a subtle, maybe an emoji or something? Yeah, it's fine, mate. What, just any emoji? Um, yeah. Score and then emoji. Okay, fine. Heart or just whatever? You're the boss, mate. Um, yeah, you know, any emoji. Yeah, a little, just, just, yeah, just put a little emoji in. Yeah, in. about how you're feeling. You're just, oh, you're, you're feeling about this fixture. Yeah. All right. So either confident or a grimace or a sore head emoji yeah. or whatever. Score line and then emoji. That proves whether you watch to this point. Chris Hubble, by the way, I noticed. Mm. Chris, he, um, he just went straight for the score. He just watched the video, put the score line in. No moves. What are you going with then? Because I said against Sheffield it would be a tight game, and I was correct. But I did say 1-0 to Bournemouth. You went, ah, we'll win this easy. What do you think about this game? 1-0. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, I, th- I, I think Luton um, are going to get... They're going it, to... It's going to be disappointing, and there's going to be a lot of outrage. But I, look, I'm hoping this is all reverse psychology, but I think 1-0. Oh. I think it'll be a tight game. I'm gonna, I think we'll nick it. I'm going to go 2-1 to Bournemouth. Okay. I think we'll nick it. Um, Obviously, I hope we smash them, but... Yeah, I, I, no, I think we'll have. I think we'll just have too much potentially. Um, I'm going to say Solanke to score, and I'm going to go for Sinistera as well. I, yeah. I, yeah, I think we will nick a two-one. I think they'll they'll score. I think it'll be quite a, a tight affair. But I think also I wonder if I mean I don't know. Luton fans can tell me, and obviously don't know what their thoughts are inside the camp. But like, I wonder if it will be a tight affair. They'll be in it, and they'll go for the win. I think we might catch them. 
you know what I mean? I, I wonder if they're looking at it going, it's a good point or we yeah. need to win. I think the context of that will, will but, play into it. But we haven't really got to worry. If we draw him, we might as well try and win. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I, I feel with Luton, if it's one all mm. and like 10 minutes to go, I don't feel as though them gaining three points is is going to massively... Ch- I mean, obviously, it would change things for but them. You think but they'd it, kind of be like good away point? Yeah, because it's not like they're in Sheffield United's position. Yeah, no, true. You know, they're in within touching distance yeah. of Forest and they're playing them at the weekend. Yeah, so. maybe. This is, this is one of two massive games for them, but uh, you know what? I, it'll be tight. I'd be very tight. surprised if there's a bit of a like a buffer, like a two. I think it'll be there'll be a goal in it, or as you say, um, level each other out. But I'm, I'm going to stay positive and say we're going to just nick it. Remember, on 59 minutes, when the clock hits 59, we're going to come together to applaud the people that saved Tom Lockyer's life, all the medical staff, uh, the players that got involved, yeah. everyone behind the scenes. Um, there, there are a lot of people that uh, contribute to Tom Lockyer still being here today. It was an emotional time. I'm sure it's going to be very emotional then. But um, yeah, let's make sure we um, applaud on 59 minutes and hopefully yeah. we'll, we'll enjoy a good day where Bournemouth get three points. Fingers crossed, eh? Let's hope so, mate. Yeah. I think we'll have just enough. Excellent stuff. Right. Cheers for watching. Up the cherries. We'll see you at Dean Court. Up the cherries. You did. I'm just going to look at Rob Wedbuds again. Mm.